Hi, this is Joan Hunter. Welcome to another episode of Miracles Happen. This week is Mother's Day. And you know what? This is a very, very special time to celebrate your mother, celebrate your children, your grandchildren, and just have a good time together. And we're gonna have fun just sharing amazing testimonies where mothers are concerned, but we're also gonna be doing some cooking. So be sure to stay tuned. Welcome to Miracles Happen. Joan Hunter has been traveling the world in the healing ministry for more than 45 years. Be aware of what the enemy is trying to do to you and say, no more. She is hosted around the world for healing and miracle services because wherever she goes, miracles happen. Joan shares her tenacious faith and how to pray for the sick. Bringing people here and sending them out to the four corners of the earth. That's my job. She traveled the world with her parents, Charles and Francis Hunter, for over 30 years. I expect a miracle tonight. Joan sees healing, signs, and wonders happen, all in the name of Jesus. And she wants to share this with you. As anointed as I am, so are you. Whether it's filmed on location at Joan Hunter Ministries in Tumball, Texas, or from around the world, you can be sure to hear good news and receive the resounding message that miracles happen. God has anointed in the area of healing, body, mind, soul, spirit, and finances. So stay tuned and join us for today's extraordinary episode of Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit, and soul. Are you ready for your miracle? Miracles Happen. And we're going to start off the cooking. We're going to cook three things today or make three things today. And we're going to start off with a Thai salad. And you know what the best part of the Thai salad is? I don't have to make it. That's what's awesome. My daughter Charity has come and she's cooking here. This is my kitchen and she's going to cook and make some of the her special Thai salad for us that unfortunately you don't get to participate in, but we get to eat it later. But you'll also have the recipe attached so you can make it at home too. And here's Charity Bradshaw. All right, today I'm very excited to make my one of my favorite go-to salads. Uh, we've got romaine here. One of my favorite um, alternatives to romaine is Napa cabbage. It's really sturdy and crunchy. So if you like romaine or if you like Napa cabbage, or if you like both, you can definitely put them in the bowl together. It's nice and crunchy and pretty. Um, and then we're also gonna make a yummy dressing. And this dressing, you can use it today and put it away. I mean, it's great for dipping your vegetables. It's great for salads. It's got a lot of flavor in a tiny, tiny package. So it doesn't take a lot of this dressing to get a lot of flavor, which I like too, because then that helps you save on calories. So, all right, we're gonna start by just chopping. And I personally don't like big hunks of lettuce. So I usually cut down the stalks twice like this. And obviously I'm not Bobby Flay or anybody like that. And then I'm going to grab it and I'm just going to do some chops. This stuff is just going to make its way into the bowl. Personally, I am obsessed with mint. So I grow this in my backyard, but they sell this at the grocery store. No big deal. But if you start planting it, it will just spread like wildfire and you have enough for tea and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to pull the leaves real quick off of here. And then I'm just going to do a quick rough chop here. This really elevates the flavor of the dish. Honestly, it just makes it feel healthier. If you're like me, I've got a bunch of kids at home, so a busy lifestyle and wanting to make food healthy is something that I, I try to balance. So for this next step, we add chicken and it's easy. You can grab the already grilled, already sliced chicken or you can grab some rotisserie chicken. That way you don't have to like go through an extra step of cooking the chicken unless you want to, but I hit the easy button and go straight for the already grilled, already sliced chicken. But I am gonna cut it a little bit smaller. Okay, and then this we're gonna add all over the beautiful salad. I love color in my salad. So I've got some purple cabbage here. And again, if you're doing the Napa cabbage, it's just gonna be really pretty and bright. And you can always have a very fun colored bowl to use. And then of course, I'm a no tomato gal, but I like it to look colorful. So I'm adding the multicolored peppers in there. And this is just gonna be a delicious, just look at that, it looks like a party. It makes you wanna eat it. And when you're talking about trying to eat healthy or eating healthy, if it looks appetizing, it's more 
likely that you'll eat it. If it looks exciting, if it looks fun, if it looks like it has different textures, there's a better chance that you'll eat it. So let's make it delicious, right? Lastly, this is my favorite part. And I'm gonna use the Nutribullet. Um, so if you've got something like this or even a hand blender, something that will really, really break down because we are putting fresh herbs in there, you're gonna want something that's gonna really, really break it down. So what I've got in here already are the liquid ingredients. You've got four tablespoons of rice vinegar, four tablespoons of lime juice, four tablespoons of whatever kind of oil. I used olive oil, but you can pick your oil. Four tablespoons of local honey, if you can get it. Two tablespoons of Bragg's amino, or you can choose uh, like low sodium soy sauce. Bragg's amino is my favorite. Approximately four tablespoons of cilantro. I feel like just like garlic, you measure cilantro with your heart. So I just throw a bunch in there and let the Nutribullet do the work. The recipe originally called for sugar. Well, I have plenty of sugar substitutes that don't affect your blood sugar. This one is pure. It's, in a, it's a stevia erythritol blend. It tastes amazing. So we're gonna add that. That is three tablespoons of that. And you'll find that this is gonna be like a sweet heat. So it's gonna have a little bit of spicy, a lot of peanut, a little bit of honey, and definitely the herbs. And again, we're gonna do five cloves of garlic. I love fresh garlic. I mean, I know you can't smell that, but it's amazing. But with the mint in this, oh my gosh, we're already having a party here. Then you're gonna have two teaspoons of salt. We love the real stuff. This is, um, kosher salt, you can use mineral salt, whatever you wanna use, those are gonna be delicious. Then, I might need a little spoon for this, this is gonna be ginger paste. And so I put about two inches, so if you squeeze out the tube of ginger paste, it comes out in little ribbons, so approximately about two inches. I don't know how else to measure that, so, <laughs> so I just put it in inches. And then, the kick. So you've got the garlic, and then you're gonna have some red pepper flakes. This you can adjust to your desired heat. I put in half of a teaspoon, half of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes in there. And then of course, you cannot forget the peanuts. Some recipes call for peanut butter. And I like to use peanuts because when, when you add peanut butter, if it's not natural peanut butter, it has a thickener or a binder in it that makes this dressing really gloopy and really thick. And so for the fact that we want it to spread out and not be um, heavy, we do uh, the peanuts. And these are roasted salted peanuts. All right. We're ready to blend. Now you'll see that the honey has sunk to the bottom, so I wanna incorporate that honey. And I'm just gonna shake it a little bit. Now, what is great about this dressing is you can use it today, put the rest in the container, keep it in your fridge, and just go at it. Whenever you want something, it's there for you. It's delicious. If you've got a mason jar, keep it in there or any kind of container, it's gonna be lovely. And you're gonna enjoy this salad. Your friends are gonna enjoy this salad. You're gonna feel like a chef when you taste this salad. You can also garnish it with chopped peanuts if you want to identify that it does have peanuts because some people have peanut allergies. That way they can see, hey, this salad has peanuts in it. But you definitely wanna let them know this is a spicy, ooh, sweet Thai peanut salad. Miracles are happening everywhere. And now you can proclaim it everywhere you go with the Miracles Happen t-shirt and blanket. The t-shirts come in all sizes and a variety of colors as well as with rhinestones and without. The Miracles Happen t-shirt is available for men and women. Get your shirt today and watch as God opens doors for you to pray for the sick around you. Both the Miracles Happen t-shirts and blanket are a constant reminder for all of us that miracles happen everywhere. And check out His Healing Promises. His Healing Promises is a selection of scriptures on healing read by Joan Hunter. If you need encouragement about your healing or faith to trust in God in a difficult time, this is for you. Let your spirit be lifted, your hope restored as you listen to God's healing promises over your life. Go to miraclesappen.tv now to order your Miracles Happen t-shirt, blanket, or your copy of His Healing Promises. Or call 281-789-7500. Miracles Today I'm going to allow some of my friends to share their heart with you regarding their mom. Uh, this past year, we lost Kelly's mom. And of course, she, we lost her, but it was definitely heaven's gain. And he's gonna be sharing just a little bit in regards to his mother and what an amazing woman she was. I wanted to introduce to you my husband, Kelly Merle, uh, who lost his mother last year. So this is our first Mother's Day uh, without mom. 
uh, or many know her as Grammy. And uh, she was an amazing, amazing woman of God. And it was such an honor to honor her at her funeral. And I learned even more so about her at her funeral. And I've asked my husband, Kelly, to join with me and to share with you some of the different things that he really admired about his mom, in addition to her amazing cooking. And that was everybody that spoke talked about her cooking. So that's very true. Uh, my mom was in many ways a Proverbs 31 woman. Uh, she was tireless. Uh, most of our clothes when we were growing up as kids, my, myself, my uh, younger brother and younger sister, she made our clothes. My first suit, she made it. My first sports coat, she made it. She had the gift of hospitality, but more than that, she had the gift of service. In the early 80s, she dedicated a large portion of her life and her money to taking care of between 40 and 50 uh, Cambodian refugees from the Vietnam War. She learned how to teach English as a second language. She introduced them to the uh, social networking system of our government, local government, helped them get all their paperwork done, took their kids to enroll them in various schools. She made sure they got to, to, to dentists and their doctor's appointments and she paid the way. She drove them there, she took them home. She helped introduce them to churches where, the, where other Asians were. It was nonstop. One day, in, sometime in the 80s, I happened to be over at my parents' house for some reason, I don't remember now, but all of these uh, Cambodians showed up in several old cars, uh, used cars, and the men all had suits and ties, the women all had nice dresses, they all had their hair perfect, and they all came for just one reason, to thank my mother. So they, they filled up our house. There they were, just kind of staring at mom while a few of them talked and told my mother how grateful they were for everything that she gave to them. Later in life, uh, a fr when, when uh, mom and dad lived in another house, they ran into this Hispanic family, and the mother uh, had cancer. There were nine kids, and they lived in a one-bedroom apartment, if you can imagine. And so my mother adopted the, uh, the whole, all of them. She, t she took them to the dentist appointments. She took them to the doctor appointments. She took them to school. Well, she sent one to college. She, she did everything you can imagine a mother doing for somebody else's children. Uh, the, one of the low-era girls shared at her funeral how uh, she, whenever they saw the white Lincoln outside the, their apartment, they would all run down there and find out what Beverly came to do because normally she, would al she was always bringing them food every Christmas, every uh, Thanksgiving, every birthday, every anniversary. My mom showed up with hams and turkeys and pies and food for the whole family, not one or two, but all of them. And she was relentless in this. Uh, and uh, I can't help but feel the compassion of Jesus for the poor myself now because of what my mother did. I reaped in her sowing. My father got saved a few weeks before he died. And I'm convinced the only reason he lived to be in his middle 80s is because she was praying for him continually. I celebrate on behalf of my mother, but I want you to know I celebrate, we, my wife and I celebrate on your behalf because we recognize the sacrifices that you make to bear children and to raise children. We know how hard it is. And we thank you for making the effort, not just for them, but to be a Proverbs 31 woman in your own right in this world to make it a better world. We as, as people, not just women, but we as people have the opportunity to help people in need. And it's like, where would, where would we be if it wasn't, you know, where would I be or where my mom would be if it wasn't for a Peter Slagle that came into our life? Where would they be if there wasn't a Beverly Merle in their life? And it's so important. And, and I just want to really encourage you not to be discouraged where you are, but say, God, how can I be a better mom? How can I be a better woman? And God will show you in many ways how you can improve. Now we're going to start something that's absolutely one of my favorite, favorite things to eat. 
Now, a lot of you are aware that the avocado, they call it the perfect food. And it's very good in, in vitamins and antioxidants and different things that help you. So we're going to share with you our recipe for guacamole. Because see, we're in Texas. And some of you go, what is guacamole? It's, it's actually guacamole stands for mashed avocados. So she's going to do her part. And if yeah. you're asking what's guacamole, we might need to have a separate talk. Because <laughs> guacamole is basically God's gift to us. Perfect wow. avocado. Yes. And then I get to put it in here. There's, you can scoop it out with a spoon, or a good one too. You, you can also just squish it, and it goes right in there, which is like so fun. Runaway seed. Mm -hmm. I love, actually, I love having avocados on an egg sandwich, bacon, lettuce, tomato, and avocado, and just literally put it on everything. If you're making this ahead of time and you're taking it to like a gathering or a party, keep some of your seeds and then put them in your finished guacamole as a decoration and that will help keep your guacamole from turning brown. Ah. A couple of options. Um, cilantro is an option, tomato is an option. Not an option in mine, but in grandma's or mom's, she likes avocado, uh, she likes the tomato. But we're gonna put in the cilantro since we can all agree on that. So I'm just gonna do a quick little I love the smell of cilantro. Mm -hmm. It's so good. You don't have to have it in there, but it definitely, if you're, if you're a cilantro fan, cilantro in guacamole is amazing. Now, some non-optionals. These are what have to go in guacamole, okay? Citrus. So you can use, we're gonna use lime here, and I'm just rolling it out to make the juice a little bit more available and to come out a little bit easier. Slice that. You can squeeze. I can squeeze? Yeah. Can I squeeze you? Ooh, that sounds good. At our house, this will not last long. So you saw how big those avocados were. This will go very, very fast. <laughs> so to keep it simple, garlic salt, minced onion. You can chop fresh onion if your eyes can tolerate it. Sometimes for me, it's a bit much. This is just so easy. Let's say it's like a tablespoon of these. I'm just gonna shake it right in. And if you make it ahead, it'll give the um, minced onions a chance to re-moisten, um, so it'll be great, yummy. And then garlic salt. This is a very fabulous Yum. ingredient. You can, go, you can also go, if you're you know, high class, you can go fresh garlic and salt and make it two separate ingredients. You can totally do that. Or you can hit the easy button again and garlic salt. And again, this is gonna be sort of measured to taste. Then likely you'll be eating this with a salty chip, so you don't necessarily have to over salt it or assault it. Well, there you go. Fresh, amazing guacamole. And also, no, you're not. Oh. So one other thing to think about is, you can see that this is a mess. So it's always good to have a prep bowl and then a presentation bowl for guacamole. That way it looks nice and pretty. And then transfer it <clears throat> into a pretty bowl. To your show bowl or to the bowl that you're gonna take to your party. And you'll grab a couple of the little pieces of cilantro there okay. and we'll kind of garnish, garnish it on the top okay. to make it look really pretty. Also what's fun is if you do go onion, purple onion or red onion looks really, really pretty in there. It makes it look even more festive. So there you go. There you go. Enjoy. Last year I had the privilege of going to Vietnam and Leslie Tracy went to Vietnam with me. That's a great opportunity. But when you hear what God did and her family regarding, especially her mother, regarding Vietnam, get ready. In 2019, I had several opportunities to go to Vietnam, and my first opportunity began in the beginning of the year in January, and two days before the trip was to take off, my mom got really sick, and it was with a very serious heart condition. And um, I was praying into the trip. I felt like such a dilemma if I was to go or not. And I was just waiting on the Lord, uh, what his answer was to be. And he reminded me of a reoccurring dream I had had over the past year. And in the dream, I was walking with my mom and we were going up into a mountain pass. And I knew the mountains in front of me were the mountains of Asia. And in the dream, my mom stops and she turns to me and she said, I cannot finish this trip, 
but you are to go on ahead of me. And the Lord reminded me of that dream. And then he said, go visit your mom in the hospital. And so that day, two days before I was supposed to leave, I went to my mom's hospital room. She said, I've never told you this before, but she said, when you were young, just a little girl, the Lord called me to go to Vietnam, but I could not, I just couldn't figure out how to go because of our situation. And she said, but I always had that calling on my life. And she said, but you are to go to Vietnam. You are to go and complete that call for me. And she said, I release you to go. And she didn't even realize that I had had that dream. And that was exactly why the Lord was beckoning me to go to my mom's room. So my mom blessed my steps to go and to carry that for both of us and for our family. So I went to Vietnam on behalf of not just myself, but for my mother as well. And that was in the Jan in January. And then a month later, a couple months later, um, Joan, uh, Joan Hunter asked me to go with her. And we again went into Vietnam. And I carried so much that call upon my mom, my family, and then on my life as well. And we got to see a, com a completion of not just the call of God on, on our lives, but also on that for so many in Vietnam. They too struggled with maybe God had called their family into something, but they weren't quite seeing the fulfillment of it. But God is so faithful. If he calls you into something, he's going to see the, the fulfillment and the completion of that call. And you will follow the divine order of God, not just for you, but for your family as well. And today, in addition to cooking, you get to meet my granddaughter, Kate, who's Kate Eileen. I'm Joan Eileen, Charity Eileen, Francis Eileen. So we got the, we all have learned how to lean on Jesus, that's for sure. And uh, we're also birthday twins. What do you mean by that? We share the same birthday. Mine's a few years before hers, actually 55 years before her. Um, but we have fun celebrating our birthday together. And uh, today, one of the family favorites, especially who? Your mother. And this is like her favorite thing, but I try not to make it too often because it just gets literally devoured so quickly, probably even quicker than the guacamole. And that is Rice Krispie Treats. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to put some butter in because according to Julia Childs, you can never have too much butter, okay? So we're gonna turn it on, and Kate is going to help me stir the butter, make sure the butter doesn't get burned, but help it melt. And we've got some harsh mellows to go with the butter. We have two bags. Yeah, we have two bags, so we got a big pan and a lot of Krispies, okay? And so we're gonna put all that in there. We use the little small ones rather than the big ones because they definitely melt uh, a lot easier. Then we have the pan when we are done that we're gonna put it in, but we also wanna put like a little uh, spray um, oil. Make sure you don't grab the wrong one that has garlic in it. So sometimes we've had help and they've sprayed the wrong one, which makes the crispy treats very interesting. So we're gonna spray all this down and it helps with it not sticking. We have fun cooking together, whether the cameras are rolling or not. Yeah, we do. It's pretty fun. I like cooking with my grandma. And we love the fact that we live so close to each other. It's very, very helpful, especially during this time. One thing I personally like to add is a little bit of ground cinnamon. It just kind of adds a really, really neat little taste to it. And so I'm going to actually add the cinnamon. I don't always do it, but majority of the time I add the cinnamon. And once again, it adds just a really, really nice taste to it. This recipe is definitely fun for our family with a seven-year-old and I mean, I'm not gonna lie, 11 year olds and older people love this. Yes, meal. especially your mom, right? <laughs> yes. And then we're not gonna just like pour all of it in. We're gonna pour some of it in. Give it time to stir around there. And I'll pour a little more in, or a lot more in. Yeah. And we'll see how that goes and go ahead and turn it off. I'm gonna hold, I'll kind of dump. 
On the bottom, sometimes there's a little bit of marshmallows. We just like to eat. Mm -hmm. And there you go, an absolutely fabulous, fun time. And not only that, it's a fun time here sharing not only sharing this recipe with you, sharing this time with my granddaughter. Specifically, I have my Gramingo shirt on, and a Gramingo is a grandmother, but just more flamazing. And, uh, and I just wanna thank you so much, and I know you've enjoyed this, and God bless. Also want my friends, Chris and Nicole Riley, to share with you how powerful of an influence her mother was in their lives and their healing. It's an amazing, amazing, miraculous story. There was a time when I was really battling fibromyalgia and lupus. Uh, it got to the point where I, was, I wasn't even able to function. And she told me, she, she said, you need to find Joan Hunter. She has an amazing healing ministry and everyone she prays for that has fibromyalgia is healed. So we found out where she was gonna be and he made it happen and it was four hours away. So I couldn't even handle that kind of a car ride. So I watched every YouTube video of her I could find and I got enough healing to get to my healing because that day I was supernaturally healed of my fibromyalgia, the lupus, didn't need my cane, <laughs> and a multiple other things that were going on at the time. Within a year of that happening, we were able to come back and get ordained. We were ordained together and go back to the same church that I was healed at exactly a year later and were able to be on the prayer team and pray with others and have them receive their healing. And since then, it's been, we've, we've been on hundreds of uh, services with her. Almost 300 services with Jen. And we've seen so many healings and just been a part of that. And it's been so amazing. And I am so thankful that my mother directed me to that because she has been such an encouragement and just, just such an amazing foundation and such a support. I just love her so much. So thank you, Mom. Also, uh, stemming from what her mother helped with her, it also helped Nicole become a better mother. She's a stepmother, but she's a mom also. So the kids pitch in a lot at home to help make sure we can get out on the road with Joan. They're really behind what we're doing in our ministry, and uh, it's been wonderful. I want to thank you for watching Miracles Happen. It's so fun getting family together, getting different people together, and just sharing what God has done and the influences that our mothers have had in our lives. Not only that, having fun sharing some of my fun recipes with you. Once again, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for going to miraclesHappen.tv. You can make donations there. You can order my books, so forth and so on, and just see what's going on in this ministry. And we look forward to seeing you next week on Miracles Happen. Miracles Happen. Thanks for watching Miracles Happen. Contact us at miraclesHappen.tv or give us a call at 1-281-789-7500 or look for Joan on Facebook at facebook.com slash Joan Hunter. And make sure to join us next week for Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit, and soul. Are you ready?